Hello everybody! I am so excited for this tutorial. It is the Flax Sweater by Tin Can Knits. I reached out to them and I asked them if I could make a tutorial for them and they said absolutely, have fun. And a lot of you asked for it, so here we are. I'm so excited. And the yarn that I'm using is Malabrigo Rios. I also reached out to them and they were so happy to collab with me. I mean, this is beautiful hand dyed yarn. It was really hard to choose what color, but I actually did a poll on my Instagram and you guys chose the Frank Ochre, so I went with that. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you should. And we have a lot of fun there and you get to see a lot of behind the scenes and also know along with me, like right now. Okay, um, the thing about hand dyed yarn is that you have to knit with two skeins at a time. So you usually either knit one or two rows with like your first skein and then you switch to your second skein for the next one or two rows. I think I'm going to switch every two rows. Um, that way it will prevent color pulling. And color pulling, I don't know if you can tell on my little swatch right here, but it can create like a design and a design that you don't want. So let's say like a lot of the lighter parts of the dyed yarn are all bunched together and it can create like this weird design or the darker spots or anything like that. You don't want that. So that's why you switch off with two skeins at a time and then your um, color will be all evened out and it'll look beautiful. So if you're not using hand dyed yarn, then you just go ahead and knit with one skein. And then when that runs out, then you start knitting with the other one. But I thought I'd just let you know that's what I'm planning on doing. And if you do buy skeins that look like this, you need to wind them up in a ball. And I show you how to do that in a tutorial manually and also with my winder and my Swift. So, so our first step is that you need to knit the gauge. And it's just a little swatch like this. It doesn't take long at all. It's on the pattern and the pattern goes from baby all the way to the adult. And it also comes in a light version. So I'm telling you, this pattern is amazing. I can't wait to make it, but be sure you don't skip this step because I actually had to size up one of my needles for it to be the correct size. It's supposed to be four inches by four inches with cast on 18 and um, 22 rows. So now I know that my size will be the correct size. Also, because this is a sweater, it's going to take a lot for me to um, go over everything. I'm going to try to make it as condensed as possible, but if you are in need of help of just like one part, I will list underneath this video where that part is. Like, let's say the collar or the body, the sleeve, ribbing, etc. And then I'll put the time so that you can go straight to where you need it because it might be really hard to find like, you know, where you need in my tutorial, but I will try to make this as condensed as possible, but also helpful. I don't want to skip any steps for you guys so that you will be able to finish this um, with the help that you need. Now we're ready to begin. Let's get ready and cast on. All right, now that we are done making our gauge and we know what size needle we need to use, we are going to do a long tail cast on. We'll make that slip knot. And then with our smaller size needles, we are going to tighten our slip knot onto our needle and we're going to start casting on. And the size that I am doing is size medium and I cast on 86. So you can still follow along with me even if you are doing a different size. And I do have a beginner tutorial that shows how to do all of this. If you're like, what? You're going too fast. I don't understand. It takes you so much slower and explains every step and so you'll be able to um, do it with that video if this is going too fast. But anyway, okay, let's cast on 86. All right, this is what mine looks like. Now to have an invisible join, I like to cast on an extra stitch and then what I do is bring my needles together. I'm going to slip our first stitch onto our right hand needle and then with my extra stitch I'm going to bring that over and off like that and then you can tighten it. All right now we bring that stitch, our first stitch, back on our left needle and that creates an invisible join. And then you place your stitch marker on your right hand needle. 
Now, let's just tighten those again, and we are going to knit one and purl one. So when we knit our yarns in the back, we go from the front to the back, and bring your yarn around counterclockwise, come down and up, and pull that stitch off. Now when we purl our yarns in the front, we go from the back to the front, bring your yarn around counterclockwise, down and up, slide that off. All right, so we're knitting and purling. One more time, yarns in the back when we knit, we come from the front to the back. Bring your yarn around counterclockwise, come down and up, and off. And then when we purl, our yarn is in the front, we come from the back to the front, bring our yarn around counterclockwise, there we go. And again, I have beginner tutorials if you need it to go slower. So, we are going to be doing the rib for the collar, knit one and purl one. If you are using hand dyed yarn, then this is the time to switch yarns. So I'm just going to grab my other skein. And if you aren't doing a dyed yarn, then just keep on knitting. Knit one, purl one for one or one and a half inches. Remember to follow along with the written pattern. When you are attaching your new ball of yarn, you're going to make a loop. Make sure that there's a tail so that you can weave that in and so that it doesn't come out. Oh, that would be so sad. And then you just knit it like that. Okay. And I like to knit the next stitch or purl the next stitch, whatever your next stitch is, with the tail so that it doesn't come off. And then you're going to switch again the first skein and two more rows. Okay, so this is the yarn that I just knitted with, right? And this is my old yarn and I'm wanting to knit with my old yarn. And so basically all you do is just twist that yarn so that that yarn comes up. And you are ready to start your new round. That's all you do. So for the neck, you're going to do this for one and a half inches. Okay, I got my yoke done. Now we are going to change to the larger needles. So if you're using interchangeable needles, go ahead and switch your needles to your larger size. If not, then grab your larger needles on your smaller cable. And we are going to start increasing. Sometimes that's confusing. So I have right here um, 86 stitches, right? I'm going to put 86. I'm going to divide it into how many times I'm supposed to increase. So divide it into 26 for me. So since it's 3.3, I did 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. So I increased after each three stitches. So 1, 2, 3, increase, 1, 2, 3, increase, 1, 2, 3, increase, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, increase. And I ended up doing that, and I had two stitches left at the end. That's pretty good. And it doesn't specify how to increase. So I'm going to show you. For me, I'm going to knit three and then I need to increase. Do you see this bar right here? I'm going to pick it up. Actually, I'm going to pick it up from the back to the front. And then I knit it. Okay, that's our first increase. We go one, two, three, and then we're going to increase again. Pick up that bar and knit it. I like it better than knit front and back because sometimes the knit front and back um, creates a hole and we don't want that. And this is pretty easy to do, right? All right. 
so increase on this round. This round is pretty easy. You're just going to purl and then place a marker. That's what the PN means. And that's all you do. And mine says to purl 15, so I'll show you that. Okay, I just purled 15, and now I'm going to place my marker, and then it says to knit 41, and then you place marker, and then you repeat that again. All right. So now you have these sections from your markers, and it might be best if you do have a different color for your um, beginning of round marker just so that you know that's the beginning of my round you can do it that way for this setup round you're going to knit front and back you knit it and then you knit the back so you bring your needle into the back and then you knit it and that gives you an increase and then you knit two stitches before your next marker okay two stitches before my next marker and you are going to knit front and back so we knit it, and then we come out, and we go to the back, just like that. Bring our yarn around, down and up and off, and then you knit one. All right, and then you just repeat this four times, which will give you an eight stitch increase. All right, so while we're doing these increases, I just, this will help you so much from pulling your hair out and ripping your yarn out because I did that. <laughs> Putting these stitch markers right here where your 15 or whatever your garter stitch, um, look how pretty that is, the garter stitch. But anyways, this area so that you don't mess this up. You know when you're supposed to purl, okay? That gives you a little reminder. So this is my beginning stitch marker, the beginning of the round, right? And then this is how much I've actually increased. So, and let me just show you what it looks like. I have two more rounds to do and I wanted to do it with you. But this is what it looks like. So here is the back. And then here's the other side of the arm or the sleeve. And then here's my front. And here we are at the beginning of my round. So this is what I do. I just did that one so I wouldn't lose my stitch marker because I have done that. This is our increase round. You see how I increased there? Little, little dot. <laughs> so we are knitting front and back. Knit to the front, we knit in the back, and then you are going to knit until you get to your pearls or your garter area. So now I'm not confused. I don't have to count like, oh, how many of these are there? There's 15. Okay, now I need a pearl. Nope. I have the stitch marker, so I know. And so with this round, you are just going to knit all of your stitches 
except you're increasing. So your first stitch, you're going to knit front and back, so you have an increase there. And then you're going to get to here. So let's fast forward. And as you can see, I use different color markers for my garter border and then where I am supposed to do my increase so I don't get those mixed up because you do not want to increase in here, just on the sides. So I knit until I get to two stitches before my marker and you are going to knit front and back and then knit your last stitch, slip up your marker and you knit front and back your first stitch. Just like that. And that's what it'll look like. All right, and so you just keep on knitting until you get to your next marker. Well, two stitches before your next marker. You will knit front and back this one, knit this one, slip this one off, knit front and back, and then we knit, 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 knit. knit. Knit, knit, knit until two stitches before this marker. Knit front and back, knit, slip, knit front and back, knit, 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 knit. To your last two stitches of the round, knit front and back, and knit. And I will meet you here. Okay, now. For this round, you are just going to knit everything, including your increase. Knit, knit, knit. And then when you get to here, you are going to purl. And then you knit, 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 purl, knit. Knit and knit to the end of your round. Okay? Pretty easy, but it's sometimes just easier to see it. I'm a visual learner for sure. So that's what you do.